Recently, I saw a dining table for sale on Facebook ads, and it was listed at only £10. And I like this style of furniture, so I picked it up as I thought it would make a good restoration project. It's a small table to seat four people, or maybe six at a squeeze. And it's a folding table, so you can fold it up and put it to one side. And it takes up very little space, as you can see. It had a few problems with the finish, some deep scratches, chipped veneer, the finish was dry and flaky, and there were a few moisture stains. The tabletop appears to be teak veneer laminated to MDF. The base and frame was in really decent condition, except for one big chip on one side, and it's solid to peely. And there's a sticker underneath the tabletop which says Legate Furniture. Maybe it's pronounced Legate, or Legate. Normally when I want to refinish furniture like this, I just use a card scraper to remove the old finish, like I'm doing here just to show you for the purposes of this video. But I wanted to try something different that I've not tried before for this table, so I bought some of this paint and varnish stripper by Everbuild. I picked up this bottle for around £8 on Amazon, which is about $11. So I've never used this stuff before, and to be honest, this didn't go particularly well for me, but I'll explain the reasons why in more detail later in the video. I followed the instructions on the bottle, which said to apply it with a brush and leave it for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, the finish was still difficult to remove, but the bottle said that I could reapply if needed, so that's what I did. After another 30 minutes, I found I could scrape off some of the finish a bit easier, at least in some areas, there were still a few places where the varnish was being quite stubborn. The finish on the sides of the tabletop scraped off a lot easier, probably because this is the edge grain of the MDF. So I decided to reapply one more coat of the stripper to the whole tabletop just to take care of the rest of the finish. Here you can see that I'm applying this across the grain of the wood rather than with the direction of the grain. And this is one of a few mistakes that I think I made on this project. I'll talk about the others in a little while. A few minutes after brushing it on, here you can see that where the stripper had been applied to bare wood, it had left some streak marks across the grain. After leaving the stripper for another 30 minutes, this time the remaining old finish came off a bit easier. I then applied some mineral spirits to the tabletop, and I used this to clean up and remove any remaining finish, and I'm using some 4-0 steel wool to apply it. Then I wiped it down with a cloth. So now I had to take care of the streaking marks that the stripper had left across the grain, so I used a card scraper just to take some light shavings off. By this point I found it quite ironic that I had decided to use stripper so that I wouldn't have to scrape the whole tabletop, and yet here I was doing lots of scraping. I did manage to get rid of the streak marks by scraping though, so that was good. I thought it would be worth talking about the problems I experienced with the paint and varnish stripper, and what I will do differently next time I use it. So firstly, as you've just seen, if you apply this to bare wood, it will leave streak marks, so it's always best to apply it with the direction of the grain instead of across the grain. Secondly, I applied the stripper in direct sunlight, and I don't know for sure, but I suspect the heat from the sun may have dried out the stripper quickly, which meant that it couldn't perform as well. Maybe if I'd have applied the stripper indoors, it would have sat on the surface for longer, eating away that old finish, and maybe it would have been easier to remove. Thirdly, perhaps I didn't leave the stripper on there long enough. I did follow the directions on the bottle, but I think next time I use it, I'll try leaving it on for maybe an hour and see if that makes any difference. In terms of whether I would use paint and varnish stripper again, or whether I would just go back to my old method of just using the card scraper, well, on this particular project, using the paint and varnish stripper took a lot longer than it would have taken if I would have just scraped it with a card scraper. And that's not even including those 30 minute wait times, waiting for the stripper to do its thing. I will definitely try using stripper again, and hopefully next time I will have better results because I will have learned from my mistakes on this project. I can definitely see the benefit in using a paint and varnish stripper over just using a card scraper, because using the card scraper is a lot of work, and you have to kind of bend the card scraper with your thumbs, and it is quite painful after a while. Next I sanded the tabletop at 180 grit using my random orbit sander. 
Then I applied some boiled linseed oil to nourish the wood and make it look beautiful again. Once the oil had dried, I noticed that I'd actually worn away some of the veneer at the edges of the table through sanding. Fortunately, it was just in one small area. To fix this, I used a brown Sharpie pen to colour in the edges, and I smoothed it out with my finger just to better colour match the wood and disguise where I'd sanded through the veneer. This worked well. Next I could work on the chipped piece of veneer, and I really should have done this before I applied the boiled linseed oil because I needed to mask around the chipped area with masking tape, and it doesn't stick so well to oiled wood, even when the oil has fully dried. I mixed up some epoxy to use as a filler, Around 10 minutes after applying, I removed the tape and then I could chisel away any excess epoxy to get the surface flat and flush at the edges. I used my brown sharpie pen again to add colour over the epoxy and blended it in with the finish using my finger before it had a chance to dry. To seal those sharpie pen repairs and also make the table more hard wearing and resistant to moisture stains, I chose spray varnish. I first wiped down the surface of the tabletop. Then I applied the spray varnish to the edges of the table and then the table top. Once the first coat had dried, I denibbed the finish by spraying on some water and using some 600 grit wet and dry paper to lightly sand the surface. I wiped away any dust and applied the next coat of spray varnish. I think I gave the table 5 coats in total by following the same process, sanding in between coats and wiping away the dust before applying the next coat, and by this point I was happy with how the table looked and it had a nice layer of protection. I did decide to add a final layer of finish though, some of this clear bry wax. This isn't really necessary, I just like the way it feels, smells and looks once it's buffed out to a nice subtle sheen. I just think it's the ideal finish for old mid-century items of furniture like this. To buff out the wax, I used a buffing pad attachment in my drill. And I did some final buffing of the edges using a cloth. Here are some before and after photos. That's the dining table finished and originally I had intended to buy this, restore it and then sell it on but now I've decided that I want to keep it for a few reasons. When I put it into my dining room to take photos of it, I saw it alongside my teak sideboard and it looked really good. I also like how it looks with my dining chairs and when I decided I would keep the table, I did consider perhaps staining the dining chairs a darker color to try and match that teak color. But seeing them together with the refinished table, I actually like that they're lighter in color. I think it works. I also really like that it's a folding table because I can fold it up, put it in the corner of the room and that's really useful because I often use my dining room to take photos of the products that I make and at the moment my current dining table which is quite a bit bigger often gets in the way of taking photos and finally I'm not that fond of the dining table that I was using anymore it's the one that I built probably a year and a half ago on my channel and I just think it's time to get rid of that one I'm not sure what I'll do with that yet 
I'll probably give it away locally as I'm not really comfortable selling it, mainly because I've improved as a woodworker since then and I'm just not comfortable selling something of a lower standard than I feel I'm capable of, if that makes sense. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and thank you for watching.